Today, I'm going to show you how you can create your own fully functional mobile app using AI. And by AI, I mean even your code editor, which is Cursor AI, is going to be AI packed. We're going to use Expo Go to serve this on your mobile phone. And we're going to use DeepSeek R1 to generate the code. So without further chatter, let's dive right into it. And this can be turned into a business and you can outsource this work to platforms like Upwork and Fiverr. So let's get started with this. Hi and welcome back to Skill Club. This is Hoisham Reyes and we're finally going to build our amazing app. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Cursor, Cursor is an AI code editor which is really amazing and I've been using it for quite a while now. Now, for the pricing, you have a free tier where you get a pro two-week trial as well as 2,000 completions for free and 50 slow premium requests. And you can even go with the pro plan and the business plan if you want to. But we're going to be using the free or hobby plan. So go ahead and download this. Mine is already downloaded. And once you download this and install it, it should look something like this. Let me just zoom in a bit. So it is really similar to VS Code. So all you have to do is say Control L and this should open up your chat here. And as you can see here, I have DeepSeek R1 in my model section. And if you don't see this in your model section, don't worry about it. All you have to do is just go to Files. Here in the preferences, you have to go to Cursor Settings and models. Now you can check your DeepSeek R1 or any of these other models and this should appear in the drop down. Now, once you have your DeepSeek set up here, now let's actually go with our prompt and ask it to create this Expo app for us. So there you go, we have our prompt here, create a React Native app using Expo because that's what we use. Now here's the idea about the app. The app is a productivity booster with features like deep focus timers there's a do not disturb mode as well as features to prioritize tasks based on the priority level and a motivation code generator that can keep you motivated. And at the end, it should have a reminder alert or a notification system. So let's just hit enter and see the magic of DeepSeek R1. Now, DeepSeek R1 is going to think like a programmer one by one going through the steps of how we're going to create this app and how it's going to have all these features. So there you go. It's actually thinking everything. And once it's done thinking, it's going to generate the code for us. So there you go. The response has been generated for us. Now what you can do is you can just copy everything from here. It's going from the basic, creating a new Expo app for us, which is named Productivity Boost. So I'm just going to pull up my terminal here and paste that right there. Hit enter. So this should start with actually creating this new app here. As you can see, it's being generated, the boilerplate. And once this is generated, we have to change directory or CD into this new app. So once everything is set, you can just go and say CD and hit tab. This should go with the productivity boost app. Now you're inside your project. Let's just clear this. And the next thing we're going to want to do is we have to install all these dependencies. So let's just copy that and paste that here. Now hit enter and this should start installing all the dependencies that we need. And there you go, we have all the dependencies installed already. So now we have to add this code, but be careful. We can add all of this code, but make sure that we have this here because this is the way our app is going to function. This is the way how it's going to call and import this home page. So I'm just going to go and remove all of this and replace this with the code that we have generated here. And I'm going to change the name from app to home screen. There you go. Let's save that. Now we have a couple of errors here, like this one. So I'm just going to go and remove this and start with how to fix these errors. Now we can address these errors later. First, we have to go to app.json right here and we have to add these plugins. I have to add export notification. So I'm just going to go right here. I'm going to add export notifications. So let's add a comma here and add these parentheses. Copy this and place that right there and let's save this. Now, the next thing is we need to start this. But before that, we have to remove all these errors. So this is pretty simple and a repetitive process. Just hover over any error and just go and fix in chat. And this should be fixed in chat right away. As you can see here, it's actually going to go with the context of the file that has the error as well as the error there. And DeepSeek is actually thinking and trying to solve this error now. There you go, because we are using TypeScript. So we have to make sure that we have the type augmented here, right there. So let's just apply this and accept it. So we don't have that error anymore. Let's go and do this 
with the other errors as well. Now, once all those small errors are fixed, what you can do is you can just say npx expo start in your terminal and this should start your app locally. And you can actually go on and turn on your phone's camera and scan a QR code that's going to be right here if you scroll up. So I'm just going to show you my mobile screen right now. So I'm going to open up my camera. There you go. And if you scan the QR code, you can open this up in the Expo app just like that. And as you can see, it's actually bundling my project. And it's just going to open this up in a few seconds. There you go. So we have the project bundled up and it's completely working fine. So let's go and add a task here, exercise. And this is going to be a high priority. So it has the color code red there. And if I go and add a random task just like this and I click on the plus button, this is on the medium priority by default. And you can even go on and delete these tasks. And that's not all. You can go to the focus tab here and you can start the focus session. There you go. And you can stop it. And you can even go on and reset it. And you have the stay focused, stay productive code. And if I click on new code, it is giving me some error. Maybe the API isn't working. So that's something that we can fix later on. Let's go to settings. So we have the do not disturb mode. And if I turn this on, this should turn on the do not disturb. That's great. And I like the design. It is quite simple and we can even go on and check on the timing for the do not disturb. So let's see. I think we can't do that right now. So let's go and fix these small bugs. So back here in our cursor IDE, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the context here. So we want to make sure that we have the ability to actually get the codes from the API. So I'm just going to go and select focus. This is the file where we're actually calling the API to generate these random codes for us. So there you go. This is the API. So I'm just going to go and check. So I'm just going to go and say the API to generate the random codes seems to be breaking. There is a network error in Axios. That's it. So let's go and hit enter and this should probably fix this issue. So this is more like the default code, but we want to actually generate codes randomly through this API here from Quotable. And this should actually work. So let's just check out the results now. It's actually going to go on and modify the endpoint. So we can actually apply this. And there you go. Let's save that. So as you can see here on my mobile phone screen, that we're on the focus tab. And if I click on new code, it gives me a random new code with the author John Lennon here. The journey is the reward by Steve Jobs. And then there is another code. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. So we have the random code generator working. Now the next step is to fix this focus duration selector. So let's go and work on that now. So here I'm just going to go and remove this context. And this time I'm going to choose the settings file as context because because this is where we want to make changes. So let's go and do that. So I'm going to go with this prompt. The focus duration selector below the do not disturb switcher are not working. Fix them such that the switch turns off after selecting duration time. So let's hit enter. So there you go. We have the new code. Let's just apply this. Accept it. And let's save that. Now let's head back to our mobile phone. And as you can see on your screen, we're back here at the settings. And if I click on any of the timers here, let's say 45 minutes, it turns on the do not disturb automatically and I can switch this off. I can turn it on without clicking on any of the time. But if I click on any of the time button here, it turns the do not disturb mode on for that limited time. And if I do it without any timing, it stays on until you turn it off. So this is working completely fine. Now we have our app complete. So let's go and add exercise here again and check if the other features are working. Yes, they are working. We can go ahead and delete this. So this is a pretty cool app that we just created using DeepSeek R1 and Cursor AI. And I'm truly in love with these AI models out there. They're really helpful and really powerful. And you can even turn this into a business model. You can go ahead, create an account on Upwork and other platforms and code using AI tools like these and get your clients to pay you real money. And with that pro tip, I want to wrap this video up. If you found this video insightful, hit the like button. Share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below. Ring the notification bell to never miss out on our daily updates. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Till then, stay curious and keep exploring.